Welcome to Tech Happy Tips. Today we're going to be in DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to lead you through what I do to make my voice sound sexy. -er. <laughs> Let's jump right on in. Here we are on the timeline and I have got, uh, for the sake of kind of curiosity for you folks out there, I set up both of my microphones, okay? Um, and what have we got here? We've got the, the Lavier Go microphone, 50 pound microphone, nothing too fancy. Uh, always down here pinned to my chest, uh, which is my preference, to be honest. And then I've got my video mic NTG, which is up on the camera about arm lengths away. Okay, um, these two clips down the bottom here, uh, this orange and a darker orange and darker pink one, all I've done on these ones is I have put them into the timeline, uh, turn them into effectively a, a stereo sound, so the left and right channel plays the same sound, uh, and then it just increases the gain. That's it. Okay, everything about, uh, else about it is kind of pretty much unprocessed. Okay, so let's just have a quick listen between both of these. Who's in? It's not about just placing it down. You've got to try and put it, place it in the best position possible to get the best sound out of it possible for that microphone as well as for the acoustics of your room. Vibrating and bouncing around. Now the room that I'm in now is definitely, it's it's pretty average, okay, I have not treated it at all. The plants might help scatter the sound a little bit, but really not too much. Right in front of me is a wall, and I tell you straight off the bat that my voice is hitting that wall and coming straight back onto me and the microphone, and, and you should be able to probably hear a bit of an, an echo. Okay, so the, the biggest thing that I hear between both of these is the shotgun mic purely because it's further away from me. Just to let you know, on paper, it is actually a better mic, okay? The shotgun mic, purely because it's further away from me, is picking up more of the acoustics of that of this room that I'm in. The room that I'm in is, is not treated at all. And because of that, it's gonna make me sound more tinny, thinner, and it's gonna have that more of an echo effect literally built into the sound to begin with, okay? And it's, and it's insofar as if something's you know, thin and tinny, you can add a bit of bass and EQ it to kind of make it more full, et cetera. Insofar as trying to remove an echo effect, it, it's way more difficult and you're not just going to remove an echo effect. With audio, the first thing you want to do in any case, no, no matter the value of your microphone, if you're in a situation when you can and you want to try and get the best uh, audio possible, is you've got, to, you've got to get the best recording you know, from the get-go, okay? In which case, that would mean you want to get the microphone as close to the subject as possible that you're trying to record and you also want to make sure that you don't have any background noises. You want to make sure your windows are closed, you're not getting the cars or the lawnmowers outside, you know, you want to make sure you're turning off anything that's going to give you a buzz or a hum through the systems, through the microphones. Um, you want to give yourself the best opportunity to have the cleanest audio and the way to do that is through the actual recording when the microphone's there. Okay, that's it. And then you can look at, you know, better quality microphones, etc. But if you can kind of follow those simple guidelines to begin with, you're going to at least start off with much cleaner recording uh, than, than getting a bad recording and trying to clean it up later. Okay, so let's just go in here and kind of clean these up on, on two ways that I would typically go about it. Uh, let's jump across to Fairlight. And you can see we've got our different tracks here. Now this one over here is the, uh, uh, the Lavier Go soon to be corrected. Um, and this is literally straight out of camera to begin with. Okay, when I put onto the timeline, this is it. I think I'm pretty confident as I'm jumping between both of these microphones during this little talk introduction, I think you're gonna, okay, so it's just running out the left channel. It's a, it's a, a shocker microphone or the Lavier, the mono mics, okay, and when they feed into the camera, they're effectively feeding into the left or right channel. Okay, so the first step that I wanna do is I need to make that a stereo. So we're down here on audio three, and if we kinda go down here to the A3 track, uh, plus stereo fixer, and we're gonna select mono, bingo bango. Now, whatever you had in the left or right channel when you turn it on, just makes them the same on both, okay? Uh, in this instance, there's nothing on the right channel and it effectively mirrored the left over to the right. Okay, so that's step one. This next step that I wanna do here is I want to apply a compressor. There is a limiter here, an expander and a gate. I'm not gonna talk about them. I've played with them with the microphones that I've got. I, I mean, I've extensively played with them and experimented. I don't hear too much of a difference. Uh, nevertheless, I understand their purpose and there would be situations maybe different places. Okay, if you wanna know more about them, let me know, but at the moment, I'm just gonna be focusing on the compressor. Now, on the compressor, I usually, 
run this at negative 12. It can go all the way up to the top and you can wind it right down. Okay, I usually have it at negative 12. And what that means, let's just go and get it to the negative 12. Let's just get close enough to it. What that means is any audible sound that's louder than negative 12, zero being the loudest in the audio world, let's say negative 80 being the quietest, uh, anything louder than negative 12 being a negative 11, 11 uh, negative 10, uh, negative uh, 9, negative 8, okay, uh, the compressor will grab that volume and kind of bend it down and help control it. Okay, so if you've got someone who talks very, very loud, but then at the same time talks very, very quiet, without doing any processing on that, it's gonna be quite a dynamic vocal range and volume between quiet and loud moments. The compressor will take the, the loud bits and help bring them down in a natural way so that the quietest and the loudest bits are more equal. That's what that does, okay? Uh, and then you kind of got how it compresses as a ratio. Okay, I've got it set to four to one, that's what I just do. That means any four dBs over negative 12, for example, it will then try and uh, control the volume of that by bringing it back to only one dB over, okay? Uh, and then everything else, I kind of the attack, the hold and the race, I just kind of keep it where it is, okay? Just so you know. Let's close that down. Uh, and then for my EQ on my Lavier microphone, okay, I turn on all the bands, okay, um, I go to band three or four, okay, and I just slowly lift it up. Now on three, what have we got here? That's what I want. I'm going to change it to that and bring it across and I'm going to lift it up. All I want to do here is add a bit more weight and depth to my vocal range, okay? Because my room is untreated, okay, I'm going to get some uh, vocal reverberations and that's going to make me sound just a little bit tinny. So I kind of always want to counter that a little bit, and I want to sound my, make myself sound more manly. <laughs> okay, and then I do that, that's it, and close that down. All right, so, the other three steps, okay? Like the stereo fixer, the compressor, and then I EQ it just a little bit. The mic NTG, now on paper, that is a far better microphone, okay? And I think I'm pretty calm. There's one more thing I do like to do, and typically, I do this, is I lift it by approximately five dB. So I'm just gonna quickly do that now. Okay, down. But then, as I'm jumping between both of these microphones during this little talk introduction, I think you're gonna prefer the Laval, uh, the Laval, <laughs> Lavier microphone, purely because straight off the bat, unprocessed. It's cool. Now let's move across to the shotgun and quick listen. Content creation it allows me to get further back from the camera. Um, and not have to worry about me moving away from a shotgun microphone, okay? It's always just here. It's always going to give me that constant sound because it's always just there. Okay, so it's only coming out the right channel now. Like I'm saying, these are mono microphones and they only record to one channel. So the first thing I want to do, I usually like to do that just to kind of uh, make it a bit easy for me to see what's going on. Uh, A4, Audio 4 track, plus stereo fixer, mono. Close it down. Now both sound, both uh, left and right channel are going to play exactly the same sound. I'm going to go into the compressor, turn the compressor on. Cool. I want negative 12, 4 to 1. Whoopsie daisy. Done, done, done. Close it off. That just, once again, if I ever happen to accentuate certain words or syllables, etc., that kind of helps, kind of keep, tames them, okay? So that my vocal volume is roughly going to be the same, okay? Uh, and then the EQ. Now, the EQ is going to be a little bit different purely because I'm using the shotgun and it's further away from me, okay? Uh, I'm turning band one and six on. I'm going through and I'm just going to, uh, what do we got here? No, 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 no. That one there, that one there. Turning up the Q factor on all of these, except for the last one, and I, we're going to talk about that. So, if I lift number five up, and now turn the Q factor up, you can see it kind of focuses it. Okay, that's why I turn them up, okay? Because I want to be removing some of the annoying sounds, reverberations, uh, echoes, etc., from this microphone, the best we can. Like I'm saying, if, if I was going to do this without my lapel, a Lavier mic, and I use just shotgun, I'll be setting that shotgun up as close as I can to my throat and voice, okay? Um, so, let's go back and just play this, and we're gonna listen to the, the terrible parts of the track.
shotgun just off camera, maybe even in camera if I want to look like that, and it's a style at that point. Um, but I have it close to myself talking to get a better sound out of it. But I'm very, very happy with the Lavier microphones, which is why I, I continue to use them. Also, because I do VR content creation, it allows me to get further back from the camera um, and not have to worry about me moving away from a shotgun microphone. Okay, it's always just here. It's always going to give me that oh. constant sound because it's always <laughs> just there. The game. I'm not moving back and forth from that. Anyway, what we've just listened to was the complete unprocessed sound of both microphones phones jumping backwards there. and forwards. Let's get into how I would... Ep Pause that. Let's just wind that up. Let's start that again. Myself talking to get a better sound out of it. But I'm very, very happy with the Lavier microphones, which is why I, I continue to use them. Also, because I do VR content creation, it allows me to get further back from the camera um, and not have to worry about me moving away from a shotgun microphone. Okay, it's always just here. It's always going to give me that there. constant sound because it's always just there Oop. on my uh, phone. A little bit I'm not two. moving back from that. Anyway, what we've just listened to was the complete unprocessed sound of... We'll pause that. Because I've turned all the EQs down, it's going to make my sound, uh, voice sound more dull and quieter. Okay, so you need to kind of somewhat counteract that. So I'm going to lift the overall EQ up, uh, let's say to 8, okay, I would be obviously more specific if I was integrating uh, this into a much larger workflow and I wanted to balance the sound out between all the different clips, but let's just have a quick listen. Lavier microphones, which is why I, I continue to use them. Also, because I do VR content creation, it allows me to get further back from the camera um, and not have to worry about me moving away from a shotgun microphone. Okay. Cool. Close that down. Done. Okay, so that, that's effectively now the uh, the video mic NCG corrected. So let's just quickly go back and do the Lavier uncorrected but turn into stereo sound with a bit of gain. Okay, whatever value or whatever type of microphone you're using, it's not about just placing it down. You've got to try and put it, place it in the best position possible to take. Now the corrected version, confident. As I'm jumping between both of these microphones during this little talk introduction, I think you're going to prefer the Laval, uh, the Laval, <laughs> Lavier microphone. Cool, back to the shotgun, but really not too much. Right in front of me is a wall, and I tell you straight off the bat that my voice is hitting that wall and coming straight back onto me and the microphone, and uh, corrected. And you should further back from the camera um, and not have to worry about me moving away from a shotgun microphone, okay? It's always just here. It's always going to give me that constant sound because it's always just there on my collar. I'm not moving back and forth from that. Anyway, what we've just listened to was the... Comp now, overall, when I compare the two microphones, the Lavier has less of an echo running through it. I prefer the sound of it, okay? It's closer to me, uh, and it just works uh, when I do, especially do my VR content creation. I've got to walk away from the mic, okay? A shotgun, it's just going to... If I went back one more meter with the shotgun, it's going to sound five times worse than what it did there, and that was only a meter away from me. Uh, anyway, I hope that's kind of helped you and brought some light to uh, Lavier's versus shotguns and how I, I personally go about kind of editing my vocals to just give it a bit of a clean up. In all cases though, the most important step in this whole process before you start talking about any sort of technology, etc., is how you set that microphone up in the room with that subject. Okay, the closer the microphone is to the subject and the more the room is treated where possible and the more the sound is controlled in that room, i.e. you close the window because the traffic is loud outside, you're going to give yourself the best chance to give yourself the, <laughs> the best quality audio. Anyway, I'm Take Happy Tips. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you next time.